start out with what I do, especially when I'm doing cranial work, is I check people's low backs to see the alignment. Um, there's pretty good alignment here. But if you take the legs and just like rest the, the heels in the palm of your hand and lift the legs up a little bit, you can tell how tight their back is by the weight of the legs. Sometimes it's best not to do that before you put the bolster in, particularly if their back is real tight, because when you get it up like this, you can't really tell how tight it is um, because they're already tight and they're resting on the bolster. And then you can also check range of motion where you're checking how much the leg will move. And all of that will also give you an indication of how much work you need to do in the low back and the hip area. And then when you drop the legs back down, or set them back down, I should say, you want to check to see if both feet are turning with about the same angle. If one foot is like way down and the other one's this way or however, you'll notice that then there's something going on probably at the sacral level and then that would be tied into the sphenobasilar junction level as well. So uh, that's just a little bit of hints and a little bit of clues. Those of you who are a little more advanced to the work will be able to understand it better. But those of you who are beginning, if you are beginning in this, just keep working with it. It'll all make sense sooner or later. As Dr. Upledger told me, he said, just get it in your hands and all the rest will come. So I like that method of teaching and you can know better what the body's asking for. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on my hands here and we're gonna start with this foot, which I guess is the right foot. I can never tell my left from my right when I'm facing somebody. Okay, so I've got it I've got it all oiled here. Her foot is very flexible. So you can start like we did on the hands, checking the ankles a little bit, but we're gonna go down to the toes and start with the toes. And of course you remember when they're turned over, once you turn people over, you still have feet to do, so the feet get worked twice. So we're not going to go so much into the bottoms of the feet as we are in the tops of the feet. And just going at the toes and going between each toe, if you can get between them. Some people's toes are just so smashed together that it's kind of hard to do that. And what will help correct the toes is to get toe dividers, um, the kind that you get when you get a pedicure, that can work, but there's some other ones that you can get that are very aggressive and they'll hold these toes out. Uh, people have worked up to the aggressive ones and really, is, I was quite amazed at how much it straightened out the feet. So that's just an idea if you're having some foot problems. I don't know how much podiatrists do with that. I imagine that they would, but some of us can't always afford to go to all these doctors, so if you're looking to do things on your own, there are things you can do. Now here I'm just going between the uh, tarsals and getting down into the metatarsal region and then coming up under the, this, uh, the ankle bone that protrudes out want to see how the flexibility is. One of the things you want to check with people is a lot of times the, the foot is a lot stronger usually um, on the inside. So when we sprain our ankle it's usually because we curve it in and the outside gets pulled. So you want to check to see if their foot can even come back into that position because a lot of times that muscle is so overstretched and this one is so short that they can't really get their foot into that position. And of course you know that when they bend the knee, the toe should be over the knee. So it's important to have that foot in that alignment in order to be able to place it properly. A good heel strike is really, really important for um, 
proper alignment to hold. And sometimes when the hips and knees get out, it's all because of the heel strike. And there's a little bone on the side I'll show you that is called the cuboid bone. That is the bone that's usually the one bone that if you work it, it'll put the other bones into place. And uh, so you can check the cuboid bone. It's uh, related into the, into the heel as well. So that's the heel strike. Okay. So here we go. <clears throat> Starting up here at the toes. You know, feet are so neglected. We just don't appreciate them. They get us going to a lot of places, but we we don't always appreciate our feet, or we don't show them the attention that they might need. Partly because they're so hard to get to you're really flexible it's kind of hard to reach down there sometimes this is just going between the toes there's other ways of getting between the toes when they're real flexible you can go in with your fingers and get them there now that's that would be a real aggressive toe position and she has very very flexible feet she works on herself and so you can see that that's that's pretty good. That's a nice toe stretch. The toes are important. The toes keep our balance. And the foot is designed to walk on uneven surfaces. So the more you can go barefoot, the better off it is for your feet. Better than sticking them in shoes that are tight. That tends to give us kind of a flappy foot. It doesn't really move very well. It's very restricted up in there and then the ankle and back of the foot there and feeling all of that we can get into the arch but I want to do that more when she's turned over so this is about what we can do and again watch the alignment here the tendency is yeah it's pretty straight so it's it's a pretty good uh, balance on each side of the ankle You'll notice that oftentimes, if you just were to stand on your toes, you're going to uh, probably find that you will fall out this way. And so the, the key would be if you're, st let's say you're standing on your toe, that this is the tendency that it does. So then you wanna strengthen the muscles going this way so that you're brought, drawing that foot in so that it's a nice straight line of the toe. And because it's bending like this, this side is weaker because it's uh, it's lengthened. It's not it's not in its tight, uh, more flexed position. And over here tends to get tight, so it'll tend to pull that way. So it's just important, even if you just do some little, you know, exercises for your ankle. It's important to keep that in in good order. All right, we have her flipped over now, so. We're going to do the bottoms of the feet, so you can see both sides of the feet being done. And I'm just rubbing across the soles of the feet, just seeing if there's how it feels. It's just really getting the texture of everything. And sometimes now you're going to deal with people with tickly feet. So you have to ease into it. You can pretty much do it if you're careful. And I would say if they have ticklish feet, the best thing to do is to grab a hold of them underneath here and then just very slowly kind of start to put your hands on them and, and just move it till they get used to feeling the, the touch of it. And, and then slowly get into where you're working with the fingertips. I have really and truly worked on some of the most ticklish feet in the world and I've been able to get through it. But sometimes you have to just take your time and go real slow at it. The thing that'll trigger it is if you put your thumb in or you go quickly into it, that'll kind of disturb their peacefulness with a, a shock of tickle. 
So that's just a little hint you can do. Um, and usually you can get through it. They'll cooperate. Their feet will decide that it's better to have it. Now I'm going to oil both feet because you don't need a whole lot of it. We'll be doing the legs next. And here what I'm doing is I'm just getting around the ankle, I mean, excuse me, the heel. A good one for the heel is to kind of take your hands and rub them like that. Now the heel actually has a, a little bit of a joint movement in it that you can maybe see a little bit. Let's see. It, it will move back and forth. Here it is. It's, it's, there's a little joint there that will move it back and forth. So it's not encased and not movable. And this is because we're supposed to walk on uneven surfaces. So we have little joint movements even with the heel. Now the cuboid bone that I was talking about earlier is when you draw the line down the side of the, of the foot, there's a bump right there. That's the end of the uh, fifth tarsal so you want to drop that your finger down into that hole and then the cuboid bone is right around it there there's two other bones that it attaches to but if you hold that cuboid bone very gently um, sometimes you can feel if it needs to align when people have a little pain in their foot or their knee a lot of times it's just correcting this bone will make a lot of correction in that whole position um, I know there's times when I've been out dancing or something and I land funny on my leg, my foot, and I get down and I just correct it real quick and I'm back up with no pain. So it's pretty easy to correct things when you know what you're doing and you have an insight of how the skeleton holds in place. And there is some movement going on here in that cuboid bone. It's not very much and then as that cuboid's bone, bone is moving, it's wanting the other parts of the foot to move along with it. So this is some pretty uh, advanced techniques, uh, technical work. Uh, it does take time to find it. The hardest part of this work is to not help it, not to think that you know where it needs to go, but rather hold it and just allow it to unwind the way it needs to unwind. So that is one thing. I'll do that on the other side too. And then just getting into the foot and rubbing it. The bottom of the foot is pretty tough as a general rule unless people are just always into a shoe. Then the feet are a little more sensitive. So little things like this you want to be mindful of. That's why it's important to move towards the excellence in what you do. Um, it takes a little more time, but it's better to be have that excellence and that integrity with your work because you'll get a lot more results if you do. Now going to the other foot, it's the same thing. We're going to go up the arch. So just basic massage is really getting in. You want to get in as much as you can between the joints and do as much uh, range of motion as well in these little bones down here in the foot. putting a whole lot of pressure in. My pressure is always what the body tells me to do. I go in as far as I'm invited and I don't go beyond that. Even if there's something that needs to do, I'll just wait until the body invites me in because I'm not going to cause bruising or injury. And so I, I choose not to set myself up for that. And then we're going to look at the cuboid again. So 
Since the other cuboid had some alignment that it did, I'm sure that this side is going to have a little too. Now another spot you can also check by holding the bones up here um, to check the cuboid, but you don't have to do that. You can just hold and find that cuboid and then let it. Once you find the cuboid, you, you, you back out of it a little bit with your uh, physical pressure, physical pinch, whatever. And the softer you get, the more you back out, the more movement you're going to feel. It's really counterintuitive, but that's just the way it works. That's the way the body works. The less pressure, the more work it's going to do. The more pressure, the more the body's going to fight it. And even though you might think that it's getting relaxed, if it's not inviting you in, it's probably not going to really hold very well. It, there's just better ways to do things, and those little hints do make a difference. But you can play with them and see what it works, how it works for you with your particular style. Because there's not anything really right or wrong. It's just that there's better ways and not better ways to do things. And this has a lot of movement going on as well. front and back of the feet you can also just curl the toes you can you know do a little of this work where you're curling the toes back and when you do curl it lengthen the foot as well so you're pulling on the top not really pulling but giving a drag on the top of the foot as you're bending these toes up and giving a stretch there but again watch that alignment happen and then you can also do it going the other way this way and stretch the Achilles a little bit up in the calf. I'll do that over here too. Just pulling a little drag as you bend the toes down in the alignment. So you want that big toe lined up in the alignment there. And then you can still pull it up. Don't overstretch it. Feel, make sure that the body is willing and doing it fine. And then you can place that. Check the ankles. Check the feet. There's the back side of the feet. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. And I think there's a little bell up there that you can hit that you'll get a notification every time we post. So if you want to, you can hit that too. But thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it.